Hi everybody, Anna Sabramowitz here, and I help learning experienced designers create meaningful learning through scenario and interactive storytelling. All right, I hope you're having a fabulous day. Listen, I'm learning things and they're um, fabulous and I wanted to share them with you so that you could have the same breakthroughs that I'm having. And these things that I'm going to share with you today are going to be uh, ways that you can engage people. You can design things that, um, that really uh, mean a lot to them, that help them change what they do and help you feel like you're designing the kind of learning that actually has impact. Like you're, like you're not just pixel pushing out there, like you're actually putting out things that matter. Why am I doing this? Okay, so uh, years ago when I started out freelancing all by myself, I got a contract and the contract was uh, for uh, 12 modules and I thought, yeah, I'm doing it. This is the best. I get to design learning the way I want to design learning. I get to create things that I want to do. I want to be as engaging and awesome as possible. And guess what? That worked for like three of those modules. And then I was like, oh my God, this is so painful. Why is it so painful for me to take this content that's ugly over here and turn it into engaging interactive content over here? Well, there's a reason for that. And the reason is because I was taking content and trying to dress it up with contextual quiz questions, with contextual examples, but I was still taking content and moving it over to just a different place. I was making it interactive. I was adding tabs and, and accordions and all kinds of stuff but I wasn't adding the important stuff. And I didn't realize this. I didn't realize this. This is what I'm gonna share with you. I'm gonna to go to the whiteboard and draw. I wasn't incorporating the important stuff that actually makes a difference when people learn. And I wasn't considering the things that help people learn. And those are the things that I wanted to share with you today because nobody's talking about these things because they're not taught to us. So when you think, is this instructional design, Anna? Is this gonna, is there a research paper on this? Um, no, this is me. Uh, I'm sure there is some, but basically this is me going out into the world, hitting my head against the wall, putting out stuff that is what, you know, good, sometimes bad, really bad. And, uh, and then saying, why didn't that work? And then also every single day learning from my customers and also every single day learning from people that are, uh, out there that are smarter than me. And then now saying, hey, how can I take this and how can I use this to improve the experience that the people that I am designing learning for have? Can I make this better? And yes, yes, I can. There definitely is a framework. So in the very beginning, what I messed up on, like a lot, was this idea that, um, that if I could make something interesting enough, um, that I would actually be able to engage them enough to want to keep on reading and learning and doing all those things. But then, um, then I discovered that there's two elements, maybe three, that really um, affect how people learn, um, if they retain, and if they remember, and if they have a basically a state change, a change of, I don't think I need this, to, whoa, I think I do need it, that sounds good, that paints a better picture for me. That's what I want to do. Because really when I, I thought about it, I'm not trying to cram down info down people's throats, which is what I really was doing when I was taking all that stuff and then turning it into other kinds of stuff. I was missing key ingredients. The key ingredients are story, context, and decision making. And that all can be wrapped up into something called interactive storytelling. So let me talk to you first about what it means to engage somebody fully because nobody's talking about this. This is the kind of stuff that sounds like a bit of woo woo. I don't have a PhD in this or a master's. This is me just, like I said, looking at what's happening, what's working in the world, integrating that, testing it, and now I'm sharing it with you. And that's exactly what we're doing in my cohort as well is people are trying things, they're applying it against a framework and a system that I've developed and then as they hit reality and as they apply that, that's how they're learning because they get that uh, feedback and coaching back on their project from me because that's the only way you can learn. You can't learn by commenting in forums. You can't learn by sharing your opinion because that's all ego. That has nothing to do with your learner. The only way, the only way you can really engage people is by delivering something that you know works and then listening to see what happens, to see if they, if you're getting the results and they're getting the results that you want. And if that's not happening, then you're just BSing yourself and posting a bunch of basically verbal hobbies on, on some forums instead of actually 
launching things, trying them, listening to your learner, and making that better. And that's what I want to do, and that's what I want to help you do here, okay? Hope that's exciting. Hope you're up for it. Okay, so let me just walk you through this very quickly. Obviously, it's a high-level overview, and you know, I'm not like, you're gonna you're gonna see this you're, there's not please don't ask me for any research papers okay because this is basically me iterating on my own um, ideas and launching things that I uh, I see work okay all right so first I'm gonna bring up something which you've probably seen before it's called the iceberg metaphor right let's just do this here's the ocean and here's the iceberg now the reason I'm using this iceberg is because I think it's a super awesome analogy for using, uh, for explaining how learning works. So learning, let's say, and uh, let's say in the, on the very top here, the, the little piece that you see, right? Usually this is like whatever the percentages are, but it's way smaller than what's underneath the water, what you see. That's why the Titanic was sank, right? So what happens is when I first started getting those, uh, you know, those modules where I'm like taking content from here, that's really ugly looking, and moving it over here and make it look really good and sexy and also add some fun quiz questions and really cool examples and maybe some animation, I'm really designing for that visual realm, right? Visual, uh, it's very like, uh, also it's experiential, you're like, it's tactile, I can click on things, so there, it's interactive, interactive. Uh, I also, um, because I worked with a genius in uh, UX and UI, which is user experience and the uh, user interface. That was something that I incorporated here. And his name is Ryan, by the way. So those are like visuals, interactive. It's also, you know, just uh, the medium is also important, right? Like, is it, is it uh, going to be online? Is it going to be just in time, like available through mobile? Like all those things, right? All, all these things are very important. But the problem is that I thought that they were enough. So if somebody has a great experience, they like what they see. It's easy to navigate. Uh, it's, um, it's, it's, it, there's enough interest and novelty in it that people will be intrigued by it, right? Those are all things that are very important in, in a learning experience. They definitely are. But they're not the only thing. And in fact, if you could get rid of these and just use text, you probably could succeed if you had considered these elements. And these are the things I didn't consider. What helps people learn? What affects how people learn? Their emotions. What else? Um, their, their past experience, especially especially if you're designing for adults. You have to consider the fact that person's coming in with a whole bunch of not only emotions, but experience, experience whether positive or negative about this topic or their own uh, life experience. And that's what's different about, you know, all those studies we're looking at. Um, they're done with people, with students. They're done with people in college who haven't maybe ever had a job, who have never dealt with a difficult boss, who have never dealt with motivation issues, right, on the job. So experience is huge. That affects everything. How, what are your beliefs? How you believe you are going to be as a student, how you believe you are going to be in relationship to this topic. Am I good at this? Am I bad at this? Do I think it's worth my time? All those things, like basically attitude, right? Have I done this before? Is this going to be one of those boring things? Is this a waste of my time? I am so freaking busy. Is this going to be worth my 15 minutes? Prove it to me. Prove it to me. So all those things, emotions, experiences, beliefs, attitudes. I don't care how good anything looks. The minute I designed it here and I didn't address these things here, it flopped terribly. After the first five screens, they were like, get it out of here. I got better things to do. Right? So I thought, what the heck am I missing? What am I missing? How do I gauge them at this level? And guess what? I had this epiphany and it's awesome. It's absolutely awesome. <sighs> Story. Decisions. Context. And I added this and somebody asked me, oh, like, Anna, but pff, story is content. No, it's not. You can actually have context 
in um, you can have things that are really meaningful like I'm gonna be doing them on the job but you can have no story you can also have a pirate story with zero context to your audience right so you want to make sure these things align anyways why are these things so important you guys I'm so excited about this I'm so glad you're watching this because you're gonna benefit from this all right so story story connects people's to people's emotions story also taps into their past experience Ah, oh, maybe I was a person like this or that could be me or wait I can imagine things I can imagine myself being over here right stories huge this whole iceberg here th this part stories decisions you want to give people agency power within this space to make mistakes to do them over again to be just it's decisions what is life about this or that doing things or not doing this taking action not taking action i want to choose this one or this one life is all decisions micro decisions every single day that's what you want to replicate in your learning as well that's what i was missing and then context obviously context what's in it for me i don't want a funny story i don't want i don't want just fun funs for fun I'll engage me in a meaningful way. How is this going to be valuable to me? And I was missing all those things. And then I started including these. And then I decided to exclude everything else as far as like dressing up text. Um, I started becoming acutely aware of when I was just adding things that didn't fit into these three categories. And it is a beautiful thing. It is a powerful thing. That's when you start getting things from people that you've launched things from, like launched the learning to, and you get things, you get comments like, that was so interesting and engaging. That actually changed the way I think about this. Now that's huge. If somebody gets back to you and says, oh my God, I have had an aha moment. <laughs> Whoa, that's, that's my award. How awesome, right? Isn't that exciting? Like this isn't, the, the most amazing thing is this isn't rocket science. This is a framework, a set of questions and basically execution and testing. Fabulous, right? So you wanna learn more about this? You wanna get into this, this, do this. Uh, I'll put a link underneath my video to directly to my calendar so that you can get in touch with me. We can talk about how this fits into what you want to do, into how you want to engage people, how you want to have meaningful learning happen with you. And then we can talk about how I can help. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this was valuable. If you did find it valuable, interesting, share it. That's what I want. Also, I want you to get in touch with me because the best way I can have impact is if you get in touch with me, we talk about this and we see if we can work together. Okay. All right. Have a great day.